Hey guys, and welcome back to another React video. I'm Super Metal Brother Matt. And I'm Super Metal Brother Dan. We are talking about the living legend right now, Jeff Loomis. For those of you who don't know who he is, um, you are missing out on the greatest guitarist that is probably running around right now in our current metal generation. He is should be best known for his stuff in Nevermore, but I think he's more known now for his amazing solos that put Arch Enemy to shame and his uh, inability to be accepted as a writer there, which uh, has brought much yeah. dishonor to the Super Brothers family, I think, Danny. Yeah, Matt's a massive fan of Jeff Loomis. As he's, we got yeah. his post, the signed poster up there in the background. So yeah, yeah he's a bit, um, like you've said before, it's like having the, the key to a nuclear weapon and not allowed to use it or... Oh, I, th I think it's more like they got they uh, you know a Lamborghini Diablo mm. in their you know in their garage and they decide to take the scooter out to race at the Le Mans. You know, it yeah. just doesn't make any sense. But yeah. uh, I, we understand that you know Arch Enemy have a certain sound and they have their own you know guys who write the albums, their own political political structure. Yeah. You know, yeah. well. uh, I I want to know before we get into this track though my strong reverence for Jeff Loomis. I've followed him for probably about 10 years now. I've got obviously every uh, every Nevermore album, sorry, that's ever been released and uh, his solo stuff as well. Particularly, no, if you want to know his best stuff, you probably want to get into the stuff, the godless, this Godless Endeavor, to see his uh, some of his climactic, his writing and his, and his dedication to his craft when it comes to soloing as well. However, your favorite album, Danny, would be something to notice as well. Yeah, Dreaming of Black is more so because it's a bit more rockier and... Um, yeah. Yeah, a bit not, not as, a little bit sad. Still in their still six rocking. string phase, you know, they're doing the E drop E flat there. When the last time I think they would do it uh, for Nevermore Run, then they would go to seven strings where Meshuggah would be an influence and they'll take things on board and start doing riffs like Narcosynthesis and whatever and um, Inside Four Walls and so on and so forth. Uh, his solo stuff, more or less, it kind of takes a little bit of that Nevermore style, but more solos. Um, particularly, and that was the first uh, album he did with Miles, I think Miles and Machine, and the second album, uh, Planes of Oblivion, he went a little more outgoing and kind of did a mix of different styles, you know, from your Queen, well, ballads, well. yeah, they, they, he brought in Christine from Dreaming Neon Black and that kind of stuff like that. It's uh, It was a great album as well, but one more for the guitarist, I think, as well, because it definitely felt like those 80s styles of shred, <laughs> you know, like the mound scenes, your George Lynch's, your Steve Vai's, your Joe Satchani's. You, know you know when the guitars were super sexy and super mm. hot? That album felt like that, but written 20 years too late, yeah. I think. Um, nevertheless, we're here to talk about a track that Jeff Loomis wrote for, or he teamed up with Toon Tracks. Uh, I'd love to see him team up and do that third studio album, um, maybe one day. We'll see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, Nevermore is off the books, which is very sad because unfortunately the lead singer, Warrel Dane, did pass away, which is a tragic uh, loss for not only the metal community, but for myself personally. Danny, let's talk about the track, Danny Moore. Do you sure. know anything more about Jeff Loomis with this particular track? Uh, all we know is he's got one more solo album to come up as part of his contract. So yeah. who, who knows? knows if this is part of it or if this is just him. I'm a little worried that this will be like a tune track. Although I feel like Jeff Lewis, every time he does something, it's it's done with like a certain dedication and craft uh, that is of a high level. So I don't think this track's going to be bad necessarily. I just, I'm worried that it might be. Do they mean bit. like tune track, like the start of like a, or Tune Tracks, that company, you know, they, 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 I think this has got to do with that drums that they're doing for it because you know how they have the drum kit from Hell and you can pr get the best program drums right, you want. You so I think he's just teamed up to a bit of whoring because, uh, right. you know, he can. He's got so much reach now that he's finally getting the money he deserves and the credit he's got he a new website now. You exactly. Know? So now the last, let's press play on this 2 minutes 57 of what we can only hope will this be, must be a solo. Awesome. This must be a solo. It's <laughs> three minutes long. <laughs> okay, Tune Tracks. Basic. Hey, look at the guy. Yeah, it's a ghost two drum. Track. This sounds more like a Keith Murray style. Mm. Oh, that uh, symbol crashing, whatever it is. It's a ride, isn't it? It's a ride for the Oh, sad note, dude. Yeah, he's oh, that's actually. Yeah, it's sick. Mm. 
shouldn't have been even there. Yeah. Ah, slow down then. <laughs> Blistering. That's wild. Clean. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this evil. Like a drop A. This sounds... The whole palm meeting section. Glass glimmers. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Diminish sweeps is great, aren't they? Crazy. So like, it hasn't got that much groove in it, though. I'm no, like, this isn't mm, like a Nevermore song at all. Nah, this, this is this is definitely a showcase song. Yeah. But even when he's not trying, it's still pretty sick. There you, oh, go. there you go. So, um, thoughts on that track? I think that one really felt like a Conquering Dystopia track, to be honest. Um, the stuff he did with Keith Murray, um, very dark, very heavy. But like you said, the groove is a lot more slower, more sludgier, and definitely more uh, of uh, those tidings of a death metal song, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, the um, double kick going and all that. Um, but when that riff wasn't playing, there was obviously some sensational shredding and playing from Jeff Loomis and that he's iconic for that you could do that in his sleep those mm. sweeps and they're just beautifully that's what I love about Jeff Loomis playing it's so melodic and it's so uh, hitting those points of just yeah that, that's exactly what that had to be there and that sounds great but it was very exciting and very metal at the same time and there was a really cool descending um, chord structure in there which is very cool um, that's that's more emanic of what Goddess and Dether and stuff like that was for me as well so um it's a good track. I wouldn't say it's a phenomenal track because, like you said, it lacks any kind of melody in that. It really does feel like um, a showcase of of, of uh, his ability rather than a, a song because his songs are far more have more depth than that. Yeah, exactly. They kind of build up to like a chorus, or they build up to something rather than just um. Showing. That's why I didn't really like his solo stuff. His solo stuff just seemed, too, which is fair enough. It seems yeah. too much. Look at my guitar playing. That's fucking, That's sweet. I appreciate yeah. it and all. But I still like the singing and I still like the whole ensemble to um, yeah. help him out a bit. So yeah. And the Nevermore stuff, it just had, I like that sound better than his um, solo stuff. Surprisingly, he went a bit more, again, maybe a bit more like on the whole musical side of it rather than on the structured side yeah. of it. Yeah. And that's what I like to hear. But, well, um, I think the best thing right now is that people are taking notice of him yeah. and hopefully this is the start now that he gets out more and there becomes uh, more excitement and drive for his final contract to release with, I think, Century Media for his instrumental album or whatever it might be, like you said, mm. singing. And then who knows? Obviously, Arch Enemy still have him in the back pocket. He's making probably more money than... Um, than he can with other projects, so that's good for him. Will they give him the keys to the fray and let him drive it around and show up, no, <laughs> Jeremy? Or help at least Probably add not. to the style? Nah. Probably not. Probably not. You know, um, but at least he's getting the recognition he deserves. And even if we get songs like this now and then, it would be enough to satisfy me. But uh, what could have been, hey, Danny? What could have been? Yeah, I still can. He still can play right songs and form other bands yeah. but hey who knows what the future holds for Jeff well whatever the case no matter what it is we're going to cover it here on Super <laughs> Mario Brothers you can guarantee it because uh, I've never been uh, disappointed apart from a couple of tracks off the last album they did but that's uh, a talk from another time Danny yeah Obsidian yeah alright so guys let us know what you think about Jeff Loomis if it's good let us know if it's bad you, you, you're wrong <laughs> so, <laughs> so we can accept that uh, there's another channel for you and it's called the maybe they're like fans of bass guitar yeah. like, there's no bass guitar come on man boo Bad yeah. song, bad song. Anyway, yeah. thanks guys for watching. I am Super Metal Brother Matt. And I'm Super Metal Brother Dane. And we'll catch you at the next episode.